The day before? Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> that's what we do sometimes. Hardware store. We literally went to a hardware store and said, oh, we got to figure this out, and we built it out there. So that is um, typical ham way of doing it. If you can't, if it doesn't work, then go reconfigure and make it work. So we, that's what we did. And yeah, and it does all, all the bands that we needed to do, but we actually sat at 60 meters and, and made that work. So it's 5.12, I think, megahertz, somewhere around there. 5.12, yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah, that was the, uh, that was the experiment. Um, as I said, the, uh, we could do, um, I have a few more minutes, so we could do direction finding. If you're interested in that, we could do it at 500 milliwatts. You had to know that somebody was there, first of all. You could, if you looked at the waterfall and you scanned around, you could see something was going on and we were able to pick it up, but at 100 milliwatts, it just totally dropped off on our other system, and it, we just couldn't pick it up. Um, the, the application and the information that we can use with that is that the current HF radio that we use in the Army is the PRC-150, and that one only goes down to 5 watts. So if we want to hide and that with that one with data, it's not going to work so well. Um, it does do data, um, not quite like FT8. It sounds a little, definitely it sounds a lot different, but... Uh, it does a tech chat method, and it also does digital voice. The, um, uh, the next version of the radio is a PRC-160. I think that one goes down to one watt, which will be more useful for us uh, if we want to try to hide in the noise. Um, and I guess I can talk real quickly on these radios, um, since this is an ionosphere group. Um, they, they, we've we've soldier-proofed these radios in the sense that we load them up with frequencies, and they basically instead of trying to figure out what's the best frequency to talk on, we give them like, let's say 10 frequencies that are built in there on different bands. And then the soldier just says, find best frequency. It sounds in the network and it, and, and it gives a, um, a signal report back and then says, okay, this is your best bet to talk to X station. And then when they make the call, it automatically switches that frequency. So the soldier has no clue, doesn't have to learn about, you know, doesn't have to get a ham license to be able to figure out how to use an HF radio. So that's the advantage of the of the military system the disadvantage is the price i don't even want to talk about that but <laughs> it's, it's a lot it's a lot more than Elecraft. it's about 20 times more than Elecraft. so uh yes but it does do encryption which obviously we don't do um <laughs> mars does do encryption that's the only like crossover between ham radio and military because we can do encryption in mars though so that's cool okay well with that i think uh yeah, you need to open up for questions. Yeah. Are you talking about oh, the ALE? For, for when we're doing the... the uh, yeah, it's got... Um, so, yeah, so what... Uh, interestingly, the, the Harris radio has a tuner in it, and it tunes on each frequency and remembers the tune, and it automatically goes back to it. Yeah, that's a great question. I've actually, you can hear it click and you know that it's doing that, but yeah. Oh, thanks. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good to know. I, we, do, we do have some, I think they're Harris ones, but it's basically just a straight dipole. You can wind it out to what band you want it at, and then you just use that, and that's what we use when we're in Nepal, but it works pretty well. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. That's actually like our DF system uses something like that, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, in yeah. cap, I use that when I go on, I look at the... The, the, it gives you like a percentage, and then it'll kind of tell you what band is going to be the right band. But, but to get the actual frequency, we didn't actually do that. I had to go with, it's, it's kind of awkward because, you know, well, in fact, Kyle just got his extra class license. I'm trying to license everybody so we can just jump on ham frequencies. But um, we sometimes use Mars frequencies because we don't have people that are always licensed. But I've, I've got like, I think I got like five people licensed last week. So 
we're, we're getting up to speed, but um, so it limits our frequencies. We were actually using the Mars. There was only like one or two frequencies per band. So once I choose a band, then I know what frequency I'm going to use. But I did, it's it's suboptimal probably. Yeah, no, uh, we use vocab to figure out what band, and then we just use the frequency that we're authorized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 